I'm Brianna Kay and you loved the baby pants so much and so by popular demand I am here to show you how to make a really easy flat pullover. So let's get started. Now the construction for this cute little crochet pullover is flat. We're going to work it cuff to cuff which means we're going to start at one cuff work across the body, making a space for the neck, and then down the other arm and the other cuff flat, then it folds over and we seam it along the underarms and down the sides. It's super fun, super simple. And then lastly, we'll come back and do a cute little neckline. Now for this pattern, I chose to use the Two of Wands Color Theory yarn from Lion Brand. This yarn has so many great neutral colors. I adore it. It's also very squishy, acrylic and washable which is great for those little ones. You can choose a variety of colors. I also have, just so you know, some pants. This is actually why this pullover came about is because these pants are so popular on my blog and in my Etsy shop that I just have so many requests. So we're back here today for this. And I also made these in this yarn as well if you wanted to match yarns. You'll also want an H hook and I'm sticking with an H hook for this entire pullover. We're making this super simple. You'll want a yarn needle to weave in those ends as well as a pair of scissors to cut the yarn. But that is it. This is a really simplistic project that is fun to make and makes a cute gift or for your own little one. So let's go ahead and dive right in and get started. Now to get started with the very first cuff, grab your H hook and we're going to make a slip knot and place that onto our hook. Then for this size, and so for the size I'm going to be making on camera today, I'm going to do the one year old size. But all these instructions will apply to any size that you make in terms of concept. It's just that the stitch counts will be a little bit different per size so that we can get that correct sizing. So for the one year old size, we're going to go ahead and chain for the cuff ribbing stitches. And for this, we are going to go ahead and chain five. Now we're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each across, which means we're going to be doing four single crochet stitches per row for this ribbing. So now that we have single crocheted four across this row, we are going to turn our work. You can do a chain and tighten that down to start the next row. And from here on out, we are going to be working into the back loop only. So this is the front loop here, and then we have our back loop. When we're looking at the top of this V, there's a front loop that is closest to us and the back loop that is farthest away. We will be inserting our hook through that back loop only for the remaining stitches for this ribbing. So I'm going to single crochet in the back loop only for four stitches across. And guess what? This is going to be repeated again and again. And for this size, we'll be doing a total of 26 rows. So once again, I've turned my work and chained one. Then I will single crochet into that back loop only for those four stitches. And you'll be working more, more or less stitches depending on what size you're making for the ribbing because as a child grows, we want that cuff to match their body size. So it might be thicker if they're a larger size and a little bit thinner if it's a smaller size. So I'm going to turn my work, chain one and tighten it down and single crochet in the back loop only for four stitches. I'm going to do that until I have a total of 26 rows. Now that we have our 26 rows and just to know an easy way to count these is by every rib you count by two. So two, four, six, eight, ten. That's an easy way to count. Every ridge is two rows and that way you can easily see where you are at 26 rows. Now we're going to rotate our work this way and we're going to be working across one side of this ribbing. So I'm going to go ahead and chain one that does not count as a stitch and then along each side of this we are going to slip stitch so we're going to be slip stitching 26 stitches across here so one slip stitch per row this is going to make this edge really nice when we start working that sleeve from it so simply slip stitch one stitch per row so 26 stitches for the one-year-old size across this cuff ribbing now, once you have slip stitched all the way across on this row, we are going to turn our work 
and we're going to be working in half double crochet stitches for this next row. If you have a stitch marker handy, I always suggest it for marking the very first stitch of a row. It just saves us some grief as we get going, making sure that we are on the appropriate stitch count. Now for this row, I have already chained one. I'm going to show that again. So at the beginning of each row, we're going to be chaining one, but I'm not going to count that as a stitch here or throughout the pattern. Now we're going to be working in the front loop only of these next stitches, and that's the one closest to you. We worked in the back loop only previously, and now for this row only, we'll be working in the front loop only. So I'm going to do a half double crochet into the front loop only for each stitch across. And remember, if you want to, go ahead and mark the very first stitch of this row. So for this one year old size, we are, will be doing um, half double crochets in the front loop only for 26 stitches. So the same stitch count. Now that we've completed this row, we are going to turn our work and this is where we're going to start to do some increasing because we're doing a bit of a tapered sleeve that will kind of open up uh, to the armhole because we want more stitches when we get to that armhole that we'll be doing some increases for each of these sizes. For, so for the one year old size, we'll now be working in the back loop when we're doing our half double crochets and be sure to make sure you kind of turn your work a little so you can see these V's on top. This loop that you see on the front here, that's, that is the, called the third loop. So we want to make sure we're working all the way in the back loop for each stitch across. To start this row, we are going to half double crochet two into that back loop for the very first stitch. And then go ahead and grab another stitch marker and mark that stitch of this row. Now once you get going, you may not need a stitch marker, but I'm just showing like save yourself some grief when you get started here and throw them in. Now I'm going to half double crochet in the back loop only until the very last stitch of this row. Now that we are at the very last stitch of the row, we can move our stitch marker and we are going to half double crochet two stitches into that very last stitch of the row. And just to know, we just went from 26 stitches to 28 stitches. So we increased by two and our stitch count is now 28 stitches. And what we will do is next we will go ahead and do a non-increasing row, which means we're just simply going to chain one and working in the half double crochet in the back loop only, we'll single crochet in each stitch across without increasing. Feeling free to mark the first stitches of your rows with a stitch marker. And then every um, fourth row, three more times, we will do an increase. So on the fourth row, we will increase for this size. Now we're going to talk increasing here. So we had an increasing row, now we're working a non-increasing row. But what we'll want to do is we'll want to remember which was the last row we increased on. So if you need to throw a stitch marker in it, feel free. And then we're going to repeat the increasing row on every fourth row three more times. So I will do three rows non-increasing, and then on that fourth row from the last time that I increased, I'll increase again. And I'll be doing that three more times, which means we will have a total of 34 stitches once we have done all of our increases, because each time we do an increase row, we increase by two stitches. And then we're going to continue to work this sleeve until we have a total of 20 rows for the sleeve, and that will be how we shape our arm. I'm gonna work this up and then we'll come back and talk about that again. Our next steps for the sweater is going to be to add the uh, front, back, and over the shoulder. So we're going to be adding on both sides of this piece because when we are ready, when the, we are finished creating this piece, when we fold this in half, you can see this is what creates the sleeve from the cuff to the underarm. So now we need to create the space that will be over the shoulders and down the front and back. So to do this, what we wanna do is we wanna turn our work and then either grab a second ball of yarn or you can work if you're doing a center pull, grab the outside yarn or vice versa, but just grab some yarn because we're not using very much of it. And what we wanna do is we're gonna take this and let it sit. I'm going to go to the stitch from this side, so the very first stitch in the previous row, and I'm going to join my yarn and then I'm going to chain 34. So now that I've changed 
34, I can go ahead and just simply pull up my yarn a little. We do not want to pull this last chain tight. We want to keep that open. We'll be working into it. And then I can fasten this off and gently pull through that strand. Like I said, we do not want to pull this last chain tight. And now I'm just going to let that sit for a minute and we'll come right back to it. So we've extended this side without having to fasten off our yarn over here, which is just kind of nice just to have one less um, end to weave in. We don't have to fasten off this side if we do it this way. So now we're going to go to the other side where we have our working yarn and we are going to chain 35 on this side. We're chaining 35 because we will need a turning chain for um, this side. So now that we have 35 chains on this side, we're going to tighten down that last chain and then starting in the second chain from the hook, we are going to single crochet into the very first eight stitches. And if you would like, grab your stitch marker and mark the very first single crochet stitch in this row. After single crocheting eight, now I'm going to half double crochet into each stitch until I get to my sleeve stitches. So we're half double crocheting in the remaining chains on this side. Now that I've half double crocheted into all those uh, chain spaces after working the first eight in single crochets, now I'm going to be working the half double crochets and the back loop only across the sleeves those sleeve stitches. So those are already established so we can simply work the half double crochet in the back loop only to keep that nice look going. And I'll work all those across the sleeve stitches. And now that I've worked the half double crochet in the back loop only across all of those sleeve stitches, now I'm going to work across these chains that we were left sitting here. You wanna make sure you get into every single chain and I'm going to half double crochet until the very last eight chains in this row. So I'm simply going to half double crochet until the last eight stitches in this row. Now for the last eight stitches in the row, we are going to single crochet into each of those chains for those last eight chains. So now we have completed this row and the next row that we're going to do will be what we will repeat quite a bit. But just to recap here, we are doing the size uh, one year old. And now that we have added these stitches, we have a total of 102 stitches in this row. And now we're going to do row two. So I'm going to turn my work. And for row two, and this will be our repeat row for this section. We're going to chain one, which does not count as a stitch, and then working in the back loop only for the first eight stitches, we will single crochet. So single crochet in the first eight stitches in the back loop only of the row. And now next we are going to half double crochet into the back loop only until the last eight stitches of this row. So half double crochet in the back loop only all the way across your row until you get to the last eight stitches in the row. And now that we are to the last eight stitches in this row, we will single crochet in the back loop only for the remaining eight stitches. And now that we have completed row two, we're going to turn our work and repeat row two until we have a total of 10 rows, including the rows we just did, a total of 10 rows for this section, for this size. It might, it will be a different row count depending on what size you're making. And I also want to talk about customizations. If you find that most of the measurements were what you needed for your child, in the schematics, but you think maybe you have a bit slender or chunky of a baby and you want to adjust, keeping the rest the same, just adjust the bust size, you can do so in this section. You can either add rows or omit rows in this section um, to make it a, a better, more custom fit. It's not necessary, but if you know you kind of have a chunky baby, you can throw in a couple more rows if you want. 
Um, just keep in mind it, it will adjust the sizing the pattern different from the schematic and you'll need to remember how many rows you did on this section so that you know on the second body section to do the same because we want to keep it equal on each side of the neck. So I'm going to continue to work up these 10 rows and then I'll come on back. So now we have that first body section done and this next part will create the space for the neck for the sweater. So I'm going to turn my work. We've done those 10 uh, rows for this size and now we're going to be working um, the front or the back section here. This is going to be the front section, but I will tell you it is reversible. Um, but we will be working this and not working all the way. We're going to stop so that we leave some space for the neck here. So we'll be starting this row by chaining one and then single crocheting in the back loop for the first eight stitches. And now we're going to do our half double crochets in the back loop only for 35 stitches. Now after working those half double crochets for 35 stitches, we're going to leave the rest of the stitches in the row unworked and we're going to turn our work for row two. Now row two will also start with a chain one and I just want to give you a tip. You can kind of see here um, on this edge, it's a little bit stretched. That happens sometimes when we're working in the back loop on those edge stitches. So along this neckline side only, if you want to start the row by half double crocheting through both loops, that will keep this edge a little bit tighter around the neckline. Doesn't make a huge difference, just a little tip if you want to do it. But now we will be half double crocheting in the back loop until we get to the last eight stitches. And now in those last eight stitches, we will single crochet into the back loop only. And what we will continue to do is repeat the last two rows, so rows one and two for this section, until we have a total of 10 rows for this size in this section. So we've just completed rows one and two, and I'm gonna repeat those until we have 10 rows in this section, repeating rows one and two. So when you're working row one, you'll start this row by single crocheting in the back loop only for eight, and then half double crocheting till the end of the row in the back loop only. And then when you do an even row, you'll turn and you'll start by doing a half double crochet in the back loop only until the last eight stitches and single crocheting in those last eight stitches in the back loop only for that row. So do that for 10 rows total for this um, size in this section and then come on back. So now we've built up this section and if you want, you can grab a second ball of yarn and you can, you can leave this attached and come back to work this ball later or Fasten off because we're finished with this section and now we're going to repeat that on this other side. Now I um, have already marked my 16 stitches. So we're going to talk about that. That's what my stitch marker is here for. But what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to start this side um, the same way as if we were working this row here. So we want to make sure that we're working where this last row over here, we've got the wrong side facing. So I also hate weaving in ends. I will do anything to avoid weaving in ends. So I'm going to leave mine attached here and grab a second ball since I have one. And I'm going to start um, over here by attaching my yarn. But if you don't have a second ball or you don't mind weaving in ends, that's fine. Fasten off. And here we go with this other section. So this will be like our front section. What we'll want to do is we'll want to count over 16 stitches for this size from the last stitch worked over here. So this is where I've marked my 16th stitch. And now I'm going to join in the back loop only of the next stitch. But if you want to keep it clean around the neck, just for this next stitch only on these edges, like we did over here, you can work through the, bo the both loops for that first stitch. So I'm simply going to join and chain one and half double crochet. And then I'm going to be half double crocheting in the back loop only for the remaining stitches across until I get to the very end where we have those uh, single crochet stitches um, in, where we have eight of those for this size and I'll work those single crochet into the back loop only. So this is simply repeating what we did over here. We're just mirroring it. We're skipping 16 stitches in between these sections. So now I'll go ahead and work this section for the same amount of rows that I worked over here and then come on back. So now that I've chained 16, I've created stitches for us to work into when we do come across here, we can go ahead 
and fasten off this side. This is similar to what we did before when we added all those um, sleeve stitches or front and back stitches, sorry. After we did the sleeves, we added stitches by doing those chain, chain stitches and that's what we did here. So I'm gonna carefully pull this through. I don't wanna pull down too tight on that last stitch. And then I'm going to turn my work. And this is where we are once again going to be working across all these sections, just like we did down here. Now I left my yarn attached from before so I can go back to that ball. And then I'm simply going to be working the way that we had before where we will single crochet in the back loop only for the first eight. And now we are going to half double crochet across all of these stitches in the back loop only. So now that I've chained 16, I've created stitches for us to work into when we do come across here, we can go ahead and fasten off this side. This is similar to what we did before when we added all those um, sleeve stitches or front and back stitches, sorry. After we did the sleeves, we added stitches by doing those chain, chain stitches and that's what we did here. So I'm gonna carefully pull this through. I don't wanna pull down too tight on that last stitch. And then I'm going to turn my work. And this is where we are once again going to be working across all these sections, just like we did down here. Now I left my yarn attached from before so I can go back to that ball. And then I'm simply going to be working the way that we had before where we will single crochet in the back loop only for the first eight. And now we are going to half double crochet across all of these stitches in the back loop only. Now that we've worked across these in the half double crochet in the back loop only, now we're simply going to half double crochet across these chain stitches. Be careful to not have this be twisted at all, but we're simply going to be half double crocheting across these stitches um, so that we can create that this row on the other side of that neck. And that first stitch might feel a little bit, a little bit weird, but then once you get going into the next chain stitch, it gets much easier. And you'll have your tail end to tighten down a little bit, anything here that we need to uh, make a little bit tighter. And now that we've worked across those 16 stitches, and you'll notice there is a little bit of a gap right here at the bottom because the bottom of the stitch is not connected, but you can weave that in and that will remove that gap there by using your tail end. And now for the rest of the stitches, we will half double crochet in the back loop only until the last eight and then single crochet in the last um, eight but through the back loop only in that single crochet stitch. So we're really just following the pattern that we had done previously on this side now. Now that we have this row set up, we're going to turn our work and we're gonna go back to working in that pattern where we will single crochet in the back loop only for the first eight, half double crochet in the back loop only until the last eight, and single crochet in the back loop only for the last eight. So we will be doing this section, the same amount of rows we did over here. So if you happen to add or decrease um, some rows here to adjust for the, the width, the overall um, bust size of the sweater. You'll need to do the same amount that we did in this section in this section. So for the pattern, I've written it as we did 10 rows here. We're also going to do a total of 10 rows on this side and then come on back. Now that we have this section done, we have the final sleeve to work. So what we will do at this point, we've turned and now we are going to fasten off that section because we are finished with it. And then to start the, the sleeve for this one-year-old size, we are going to start by skipping 34 stitches. Now after skipping 34 stitches, we'll go ahead and join our yarn and do a chain one and then working in the half double crochet back loop only, we would work the next 34 stitches for this row. So we're not gonna work the entire row, I've already marked this, we're doing 34 stitches for this row. Now our next steps are going to be to work the sleeve without doing any decreasing. So we're going to work five more rows without decreasing. So we're just working in the half double crochet in the back loop only, 
not decreasing or increasing any stitch counts here. We're going to work five more rows and then come on back. So now that we have the rows that we need, so I worked five more rows, which means I have a total of six at this point for this section. We are going to be decreasing the on every fourth row. So we're going to start doing our decreasing um, three times. So we're going to decrease and then we, we won't decrease again until we have done our through four rows. So we're going to start by chaining one. And in the first um, two stitches, we're going to half double crochet two together. And I work those in the back loop only to keep it consistent. And then we will half double crochet in the back loop only until we get to the last two stitches of this row. And now that I have two stitches left, we are going to half double crochet two together through those back loops only. And that completes a decreasing row, which decreased by two stitches since we decreased on each side. So when, now we have 32 stitches from 34. And every single time we do a decrease row, that's going to decrease by two stitches. So I've worked a decrease row, and then I'm going to work three non-decreasing rows. And then we're going to repeat that for a total of three times, and then come on back. So I finished that segment of decreases where we did a decrease row and then we did three more rows without decreasing and we did that for a total of three times. So now for the size, we have 18 rows for the sleeve and we have two rows left to match the same length of the sleeve on this other side. So for those last two rows, we're going to work a decrease row and then a non-decrease row. And this will bring us to 26 total stitches after this first decrease row for um, this sleeve. And then, you know, after this decrease row, we're just going to do one row without de decreasing and we will have 26 stitches, which matches the same amount of stitch counts that we started with on the other sleeve. Now that we have a total of 20 rows for the sleeve, it's time for us to work on this second cuff. So we're going to be doing this the same way we did the first one, only we're going to be working from the edge of the sleeve here since we're finishing off instead of starting. We're going to start by chaining five. And then we are going to start by working in the second chain from the hook and we're going to single crochet in those four stitches. And now that we're back down to the edge of the sleeve, sleeve sweater, we actually want to only be working in the front loops only here. So we are going to slip stitch the next two stitches in the front loop only. And the reason why we're doing this is then it leaves a nice line on the other side of this sleeve. You can kind of see it starting right here. And that line will match up with the right side of our first sleeve. It's just a nice line along the bottom of that ribbing. So we're gonna slip stitch two into the front loop only and then turn our work. Skipping those two slip stitches, we'll be working in the back loop only of the single crochet stitches and we'll work them all the way across here. So single crochet four for this size in the back loop only. And now we are going to turn our work and chain one and working in the back loop only for this row, we will single crochet four. Then working in the front loop only of these sleeve stitches, we will slip stitch two. And now we're just gonna keep repeating those steps. We'll turn our work, skip those two slip stitches and single crochet four in the back loop only. We're going to work all the way across until all 26 stitches have been worked and we have 26 rows of this ribbing for the other sleeve. Now we have our flat sweater here, and this is the perfect time to block. It is a little bit easier to block flat and like really open up these stitches. You can take a look at the schematic to see um, the measurements of each section so that you can block it to dimensions, but we will block and open up this ribbing quite a bit. You can see it really, really pulls in, and by just doing a simple blocking, it helps everything lay really nicely for this sweater. So block this, and then come on back, and we'll talk about seaming. Ready to do some seaming for this sweater. We've got this amazing shape happening here. But if we have the wrong side facing up, and you can tell the right side has that nice line on the cuff, but the wrong side facing up, just simply grab it and pull it down. And then we have our sweater. This is what's so fun about it. It's really, really simple. 
And then we have a couple choices for doing the seaming. Today I'm simply going to grab um, my yarn and my yarn needle and I'm going to hand sew it. And that's similar to what this one looks like. And as you hand sew this together, uh, make sure that you are matching up the rows as best as you can so it looks a little bit more seamless, I guess you could say. Or the other option is to grab your crochet hook and slip stitch the edges together with a surface slip stitch. And that's what this one looks like. But when it comes to seaming, you're going to go ahead and attach your yarn at one of the bottom edges. So like down here on one side, and we're going to be seaming the sides together up to the underarm and then across the arm. So it's, it's really easy to do and we'll be doing two seams. So on each side, we'll do up and across. So only two seams to get this sweater completely seamed together. Now what I like to do is start by weaving in my tail end. That means I don't have to come back later with my yarn needle and weave it in. I can simply do that now by hiding it and having it um, be a little bit faster. Now, when it comes to seaming, whatever you want to do, if you want to do a whip stitch, if you want to try to mimic um, what is happening here on each side, you can do so. So for this one, what I might do is come up the, what would be considered the front loop if I was looking at the right side and come through. And then I'm going to go through the back loop of this other side and then pull that together. And I'll just simply keep going across that way and, and it will just, help hide that seam. The thing, the thing is with this one, we've got a lot of vertical lines happening. So it's totally fine when you're doing the seam, if you still have um, a vertical line with that seam, like I'll have here, I'm kind of creating that. And I'm just going back and forth through these stitches and uh, seaming that together. And then once you do a few, you can kind of tug on it to get it to go tight enough and then keep on going. And now I've gotten to this underarm area. I'm just going to simply keep lining up these rows and you can just go back and forth or use a whip stitch. This already has a lot of texture on it, so it's not going to be um, extremely difficult to to hide. I guess you could say your seam, even though we're not actually hiding it. All garments have seams pretty much. So if you look at anything in your closet, it has a seam and that's kind of part of the feature of um, doing a garment. So I'm just going to keep going back and forth, kind of going through these to line them up because those line up quite nicely and uh, joining all these rows together. So I'll go all the way through the cuff and then fasten off and then complete that on the other side. Now the last step we will need to do is this neck ribbing and we're going to go ahead and grab our crochet hook and attach to the side of the neck. You just want to kind of attach to a stitch on the side and we're going to go ahead and join our yarn and for this size we're going to chain five but if you would like to adjust the um, width of this it's all about these starting chains you can do more or less i just like to tighten down that last one and then i like to start by working those back humps and i am going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each across which means that i have four stitches for this neck ribbing. And next I'm going to slip stitch into the next two stitches on this edge. So on the edge of that neck, then we will turn our work and we're going to skip those two slip stitches and starting in the back loop only, we will single crochet those four stitches in that back loop only. Now, if you want the very last stitch in this row and or the very first stitch when you're working the outer row, the outer stitch on the row, you can single crochet through both of those to make it a little bit cleaner. So now that we've done that, we're going to rotate our work again. And I just want to know if you throw this into a shallow bowl on your lap as you're doing it, it's very easy to spin that bowl and rotate this. Then we're going to chain one and single crochet in the first stitch through both loops if you want. You can always work them all in back loop. It's not too big of a difference. And then single crocheting in the back loop 
we will complete the rest of the stitches in the row and that stitch count once again is four and it will not change. Then we're going to repeat what we did before. We're going to slip stitch along the next two stitches on that next, on the neck edge. And then once again, rotate our work. Skip those two slip stitches and working in that back loop only, got some fuzzies there, we will single crochet four. And we're going to keep working that all the way around this neck edge, but I just want to point something out and I'm gonna show you when I get there in just a minute that we have a lot of you know, corners. And if we continue to repeat these steps on the corners, we might have too much fabric. So we're actually gonna be working these corners a little bit different. I'm gonna get closer and come back and show you that. And as I get back down to this corner, it's like a sharp turn here. So what we'll wanna do is instead of slip stitching one stitch per row or one stitch per stitch along this edge, we are going to be doing almost like a, a slip stitch decrease. So I'm gonna pull up a loop then go into the next one, the next space, I guess you could say, because once we start working along the front or the back edge of this, we're working along the rows. But for right now on this corner, I'm gonna slip, pull my hook through and kind of slip stitch through all those. So now I have worked um, less stitches along the edge here, but we're still gonna be working this in the same way. So I have one slip stitch, but I actually worked it along more than just one um, space. I'm gonna do that again. So it's almost like doing a decrease, but it doesn't pucker it. So I'm doing a slip stitch. And now I would turn my work and it will make these corners be less um, puffy, I guess you could say. You don't wanna have a lot of extra fabric hanging out there. So now we'll skip those two slip stitches and working in the back loop only, we will single crochet across. It really softens those turns, um, helps it shape a bit better. And that way we don't have extra fabric when it comes to that ribbing. And you can keep looking at it to see how it looks, but notice how you know, this looks great, even though we had a right angle turn. By doing that that way, by working um, those slip stitches over more stitches here, it helps that curve. And that's what I'll continue to do on this corner as well. You can kind of tell that it helps shape it into more of a U shape versus this 90 degree angle. And we'll continue that all the way around until we get back to the beginning. When you get here, I'll come on back and I'll show you how to join your last row with your first row. Now that we've worked all the way back around, I wanna go ahead and join these two edges by using slip stitches. So I'm gonna chain one and in the row I'm working in, so the current row or last row, I'm going to insert my hook into that back loop only. And then I'm going to grab the back loop only or simply the loop from that very first row and then slip stitch those together. And then we will complete that all the way down. So working through your current row through the back loop only and the first row through the back loop only or that loop, yarn over and slip stitch together. We'll do that for all the stitches and it does a nice uh, join and then we'll fasten off and weave in all of our ends. That is how it ends up looking and it's kind of hidden since it's on the side of the sweater. Now once you've woven in all your ends, you can go ahead and block it one more time if needed, but uh, I love this uh, yarn. I feel like it really does well even if you don't block it again. And it's also washable, which is great with kids, um, the acrylic yarn, because we know they're gonna get a little bit messy so you don't have to worry about it. I have actually washed this in the wash um, before I finished filming and it worked out great. I just put it in a laundry bag. Thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. I hope you really enjoyed uh, the making these sweaters. And once again, I do have uh, pants in the smaller sizes that is the same stitch to match these if you want a coordinating outfit. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back for more fun crochet projects soon.